stuck at home. Yes, I'm wearing a tie, getting ready for church. And we were thinking of various things that have affected our life recently. One of those is, I just turned 65. Yes. Well, Medicare. You know you're getting old when you're on Medicare. Yep, finally made it. Sue and I are on Medicare. And I know I'm getting old, but thankful, very thankful. I have good health and a beautiful wife and very thankful for all that God has done. I want to continue with a very brief theme that we were talking about last Wednesday night because it is so incredibly important. We've been talking about the deeper things that God's love unlocks. And oftentimes we tend to normalize God's love. We humanize it. Uh, we have a hard time identifying with something that is supernatural, such as the love of God that died for all humanity. So in Romans chapter 5 and verse 8 through 10, not just those that would have believed, but all of his enemies also. A love that overlooks all of the sins and inadequacy of humanity and pays a great price the grace of God that provides for each and every one of us in Romans 5.20, it abounds towards us. And Wednesday night we were talking about the love of God being the means by which the church grows. So in Ephesians 4.16, after everything else is said, I'll, I'll read this to you, from whom the whole, all the body being fitted together and held together by or through every supporting connection according to the working or activity and the measure of each individual part constantly brings about the growth of the body for the building up of itself in love. Now think about that for a moment. Love is the means by which we grow. Each one of us is a vital part of that. We're all connected to one another. But love is the means by which we grow. That's almost as if a person lacked certain aspects of nutrition, it would affect the growth of their physical body, neurologically, mentally, and even physically, because they didn't have everything they needed. If we do not have the love of God, and when I speak of the love of God, I speak of that which is supernatural. There are many people that may do great things for other people. We talked about this last Sunday. There are causes that people get involved in. But those causes fall short if they lack the love of God in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 1 through 3. We may give our body to be burned. We may give all of our riches to the poor. We may go to great lengths in terms of our rhetorical skill to speak to the needs of people. But lacking love, it means nothing. It means nothing. This is God's love. God's love never fails. What our culture needs now more than anything else is not someone to point out all the faults and the flaws. The devil loves that. That's what he, he revels in that. That's one person many times placing themselves above another person. What our culture needs is for someone to do what our Lord has done, which is to take a position below everything to leave his home on high and come for sinful men to die. Seems strange. It is. It's a Philippians 2 and verse 6 and on through 8. But after that point, because of his obedience to that, God highly exalted him in verse 9. 
And I believe that the church has an opportunity to stand out because of its love for others. Truly, unconditional love that's directed from the heart of God towards a lost world. Not conditioned on preference, not conditioned on socioeconomic uh, issues, not conditioned on the color of their skin, not conditioned on any other aspect. Because the love of God isn't. They have an opportunity to be an example. Remember Jesus said this, first of all, if we don't live in this kind of love towards one another, we'll not have the oneness that God intended for us to have as a church, as an organization, as a body. And therefore, all the people that are searching for something to believe in, a cause that would cement them together, they'll not find the true and only supreme motivation. They'll not find the body of Christ in John 17 and verse 21. And if they don't find that, they will never truly know, never be convinced that God did something supernatural on our behalf, that he sent his son to pay for our sins. The gospel is more than a message. It's a life lived, but it's a life lived among ourselves together as we grow up in him in all things, who is the measure and the stature of God's example, Christ himself. This is why the church has the great opportunity to be the testimony and the miracle that our world is looking for. I hope you'll consider these things. Think about them as you go to your church or you come here. Think about the opportunity that we have to express this heart and attitude supernaturally, something we've received from the Spirit towards another person, and in so doing, testifying to the miracle of Christ's mission on this earth. Till next time, friends, God bless you.